हेलो फ्रेंड्स इट इज अ जनरली एक्सेप्टेड डिक्टम दैट एवरीथिंग इन लाइफ हैज अल्टरनेटिव और देर आर चॉइसेस और ऑप्शन बट एक्सपीरियंस डज नॉट हैव एनी अल्टरनेटिव आई मीन यू हैव टू पुट इन सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ टाइम टू गेन दैट गेन दैट मच एक्सपीरियंस देर इज नो शॉर्टकट देर इज देर आर नो अल्टरनेटिव टू इट सो वट एवर आई एम शेयरिंग विथ यू इज विथ सर्टन अमाउंट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ हैविंग इंटरेक्टेड विथ थाउजेंड ऑफ स्टूडेंट्स ओवर दी पास सो मेनी ईयर्स एज यू आर वेटिंग फॉर योर मेडिकल कॉलेज जर्नी टू बिगिन वॉट ऑल थिंग्स आर यू गोइंग टू एक्सपेक्ट और वॉट ऑल चैलेंजेस यू विल फेस I have already made some videos on that. Particularly, the previous one was on experimental and hematology practical. You can refer to that video. This particular video uh, is going to be focused on the most important part of physiology practicals, and that is clinical physiology. So I had to make a separate video for this. Why do I say uh, this is the most important part? We'll come to that in a bit. But uh, when I recall my uh, clinical practicals not of first year but in the final year when we had to attend clinical postings and particularly medicine it reminds me of our medicine professor dr nitin kudrimoti he was the person he was the reason why the entire batch wanted to uh, take md medicine for post graduation i mean a grand persona grand personality uh, an all rounder he used to play cricket also when he would walk in the uh, hospital and conduct the clinics you would have a certain swag so everybody almost uh, idolized him almost an iconic figure and everybody wanted to be like him so you know this is one reason why people choose a certain branch that they have certain icon in that branch they want to imitate or follow that icon anyways whenever we talk of uh, clinical our batch always remi uh, reminded is reminded of dr kudrimoti okay now coming to the topic at hand and that is clinical physiology for first year uh, this is the most important part the major chunk why do i say this is the most important part for two reasons a for your first year point of view your final exam will have almost half the marks devoted to clinical practicals so obviously this is the major chunk it's almost the make or break type of situation if you are not able to perform you are not likely to clear that uh, practical exam and the second reason why it is important is that you are going to make a foundation of your clinical skills and your clinical life is starting uh, with this clinical physiology uh, in the first year in fact for the first time uh, in medical college you will get that feel of you know uh, becoming a doctor the other practicals are like pricking of the finger or having those frog uh, grafts etc but this one for the first time will give you that feel uh, with a stethoscope around your neck and you are checking the pulse of the patient and blood pressure and so on and so forth so this is interesting also but at the same time the most difficult the most challenging practical so let's have a quick uh, look at this particular part of physiology practical when you enter the medical college and clinical physiology uh, lab when you enter the uh, clinical physiology practical lab and the clinical uh, physio practicals begin first thing that you will realize is that you are going to perform those skills on live human volunteers or subject now you uh, you know your uh, 200 students will be divided into eight batches for example in every batch there will be about 15 or 17 students uh, tutored by one particular teacher so you will be standing around or seated and uh, the teacher or tutor will give you the instructions they will uh, perform a demo on the human subject the question is who is going to be that human subject in the first year at the first year level we can't provide you subjects or patients from the hospital side so obviously one of you uh, will become the human subject and when i say one of you it is the it is a boy in your batch will become the human subject and i'll tell you what i see every year is that initially the attendance is very good for these practicals but slowly the attendance drops because 
the teacher would uh, forcibly make someone uh, subject or volunteer for the practical and uh, then they have to remove the shirt they have to strip partly and lie down in front of their batchmates and uh, they feel awkward they feel embarrassed about it and they uh, uh, end up uh, bunking missing the practical and therefore the boys in the batch the, their numbers drop uh, uh, after each practical or or for the practicals so uh, well now a piece of advice here is that if a boy is ready or if you want to be uh, if you want that your boys in your know, batch are ready to become human subjects then all of you should make that boy feel comfortable about it i have seen that uh, the girls or even boys they start giggling around or smiling uh, when a boy is ready or is uh, compelled compelled to become the subject by the teacher uh, and then the boy starts feeling awkward that the batchmates are smiling giggling around so avoid this in fact you should feel a certain thankfulness toward that human subject because he is making that sacrifice so that you all can learn he is also there uh, like you as a medical student he is also there to learn and every uh, every practical every week it will be on rotation uh, so uh, see to it that Uh, you make those boys comfortable so that they are ready to become the human subject for you to learn all right uh, you can offer them some treat small treat in the canteen college canteen later on etc all right so uh, that's about the human subject or volunteer um now there's going to be batch wise practicals like uh, as i said uh a human subject and 15 17 students around and one teacher now i have seen that the students want to attend practicals of uh, conducted by their favorite tutor or teacher so they change batches i have seen that don't ever do that i mean uh, the clinical practicals the methodologies are almost the same uh, and therefore uh, you have no reason to change the batches stay where you are in fact if you want to change the batch batch your batch uh, you are rubbing the teacher wrong way and you know teachers will feel bad about it so uh, better uh, maintain your batch throughout the year don't change the batches and start attending those clinical practicals start learning those skills one thing that i want to mention here is you will be given instructions by the teacher and then teacher might leave the lab leaving it to you that now you can uh, make the groups or you can uh, perform those clinical skills on that particular human subject your batchmate do not leave the lab without performing that skill on the same day because this is one exam which is different from all other exams in the physiology practical exam all other exams all other parts of the exam will give you some amount of time to think about that practical so that you can answer the questions also and perform the practical in the case of clinical practicals in the final exam you will get four questions of 10 marks each so that's 40 marks chunk make or break situation if you do it well you are going to pass otherwise not uh, now in the clinical practical exam you will be provided the question almost instantaneously just before the examiner and you will get the chit you will get the question and then and there instantly you have to perform that skill and the marks will be given on the basis of what you perform there and not on the basis of what you just blurt out as answers which you have mugged up on the previous night so this is different compared to all the exams that you have faced so far remember the marks are given for your skill and the skill cannot come overnight uh just like driving skill uh, you can't go on the first day and then just ask the rto people uh, give me the driving license no you must have repeatedly performed and acquired that skill in order to get that license same goes with the clinical skill straight away in the exam you can't say give me marks by just doing some skill here and there you will have to have to have performed that skill at least 10 15 times 
so do not leave the lab without performing the skill even if the teacher has left the lab there is a tendency among the students that nobody is watching attendance is done okay let's go uh, let's leave the lab we'll do it uh, some other time that some other time never comes if you watch that movie night and day uh, in that movie the protagonist says someday i'll do this means that someday is a euphemism for never so it never happens and therefore perform the skill then and there and uh, in fact i would say repeat try to repeat that skill a number of times even at your home if there is a younger brother uh, request him uh, to be the subject and you can perform and learn that skill revise practice 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 only practice will make you perfect in that particular skill remember when you go to second year on the very first day as you start you are attending your hospital duties it will be assumed that you know this well and then the further things will be taught so therefore while you are leaving the first year uh, you have to have a certain proficiency in those clinical skills remember all these things repeated revisions are necessary ask the departments uh, to keep revision practicals every now and then and perform those skills again and again so that's very important part and since this exam is different this part of uh, ex uh, clinical practical exam is different compared to others you have to have a certain spontaneity i mean for example you have read the reasons for hepatomegaly and your question is palpate the liver and give your findings now in the exam you will go and start performing the skill straight away ah remember this uh, you are not supposed to talk with the examiner sir i will palpate from the right iliac fossa and i will reach here no you are going to perform that and examiner observes you and gives you the marks and then a small fraction is for the reasons of hepatomegaly whatever you have uh, read and mugged up okay so uh, remember skill has maximum marks not the rectified answers what are the resources that uh, you can use the books as i've already mentioned in the previous video vd joshi sadhana mendurwar is the gold standard you can use it for clinical skills also uh, and then Hutchison's clinical methods is a universally accepted book for uh, the clinical methods you can buy it in the first year no problem but then by the time you go to final year and when you actually require those skills on the patients by that time a new edition will have come into the market and you will have to buy that also so it's your choice you can go for Hutchison's clinical methods also which is uh, of course a globally accepted author on uh, this subject journal if you have completed the journal on time then yes uh, before the exam even journal can be a resource from where you can prepare now coming to an important part videos videos uh, can they be a good resource material for the clinical examination i have seen this trend uh, particularly in recent years that uh, the students are watching the videos without actually uh, performing the skill on the subject they just watch the video and okay i know this i can do it and then they try to uh, imitate that in the exam and more often than not i have seen them failing in performing that skill because uh, observing someone else doing it and doing it by yourself 10 15 times practicing it these two are different things there are very good channels on the clinical practicals uh, dr vakas's channel uh, is very popular in fact i have worked with dr vakas i know this is a good channel but then uh, there are certain limitations to this particular aspect watching a video and then uh, trying to imitate that in the exam the other drawback is the methods that are shown in those videos and the methods that are taught in your college by your teachers are likely to be different not every time not every method but maybe one or two methods and then what happens is the examiner ends up asking you where do you learn this we have never taught it like this and then you end up saying i watched the video um, well so uh, you can watch the videos for 
learning those skills but then uh, don't stop there perform those skills by yourselves that's the only point that i'm trying to make always follow what your college teachers are telling you even for the books well there are uh, hundreds of books available but what is put up in your college department try to follow that first that's my sincere advice to you all always try to keep your college teachers uh, happy so uh, that's uh, let that be uh, the thumb rule all right and what other materials you have to buy do you have to have a stethoscope of your own personal stethoscope okay maybe yes you can buy a stetho everything is provided by the college so you don't have to worry about that if you still want to have your stetho like uh, uh, some kind of a you know feel that uh, you are having a stetho in your hand or around your neck and you are feeling a you are getting a feeling of a doctor let's uh, i mean it's okay but then remember buy the most i mean the cheapest one yes many people will just go for litman stethoscope m3 type best one in the market the costliest one don't make that mistake why because the stethoscopes are, do likely are likely to get stolen yes uh, you have to be little careful of these things you you are completing your journal you have to keep it in safe please write your names on the first page the certificate page write your name roll number etc get it signed properly on time and keep it safe because uh, there may be one or two lazy students in your batch they have not completed the journal and they might just tear that first certificate page and uh put a new page and write their own name these things do happen in medical colleges not very often but yeah once in a while so even stethoscopes are either lost or even maybe i i'm not saying stolen but maybe they may be taken by someone and then if it is a uh, if it's a costlier one then you will have uh, that much greater regret isn't it you will feel bad so buy the cheapest one even if it is lost or it is taken by someone uh, the 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 feeling of hurt or bad will be that uh, lesser all right so this was a quick summary of what you can expect in the clinical practicals in the physiology lab um i'll make more such videos as we go uh, further ahead uh, into this and uh, Uh, from time to time you can ask me the doubts on all my social media platforms get those doubts clarified immediately so that this journey is going to be very very smooth and easy for you